Hello and welcome to this Infinite Runner Engine tutorial. I'm Renaud from Our Mountains, and today we're going to see how managers work. Uh, so really, the engine uses managers as central reference points for a lot of classes and components. Um, they will most of the time always be present in your scene. They will maybe remember the number of points, uh, the sounds that are playing, or where to spawn the characters. There are a few of them, and in most scenes you'll have a game level input and sound managers present at all time. Uh, usually you want to place them on empty game objects. Their position in your scene doesn't matter. Um, for example, here we have the flappy cloud and you can see that I have my game input and level managers uh, nicely ordered here. Uh, they are really just uh, empty game objects with the manager scripts. Um, so again, their position in the scene really doesn't matter. They are invisible. But it's good practice to, you know, just uh, put them in uh, one corner of your scene and uh, so you, you know where they are and you don't delete them by accident by maybe uh, selecting stuff in your scene and uh, pressing delete. So the first manager that you'll need to know is the game manager. It's really uh, the highest level manager uh, in the game. It's, uh, well, in the asset, it's responsible for setting the target frame rate. Uh, it's also responsible for storing the points, handling the timescale and the life system. In most cases you won't have to interact with it much, but make sure there's one in your level. And uh, if you want to know more about it, I won't cover it in this tutorial because uh, again it's really edge casey, but uh, you can go to the API doc documentation or just open the class and have a look at the comments. It's really, uh, really easy to understand. Moving on, we have the level manager. Uh, this one you will probably have to interact with. Uh, it's a little bit more complex than the game manager and it's really uh, the central piece of each of your game scenes. So if the game manager handles the entirety of all your levels and it will live on, um, outside of each scene, and the, the level manager is really specific to each scene. Maybe you have a scene where you control a bird and in the next one you'll be a plane and in the next one you'll be something else. Uh, you will have probably a different level manager set up for each of these, where your game manager will be global to your whole game, your whole application. Uh, the level manager is responsible for a few things. First of all, it will be responsible for spawning your character or characters. Uh, it will handle the bounds of the level, the speed of the level, um, the duration of the intro and outro, uh, the display of an optional uh, countdown, uh, and also the control schemes of, um, of the level. So uh, let's start with the beginning. Uh, as you can see, it uh, requires a starting position. A uh, starting position can be really any transform. Uh, mine here is just a simple transform, uh, empty game object. And I just, uh, if you want to uh, to have one, you just drag one into uh, into this, this slot here. Um, then you have the playable characters. So in this level there's only one, but I could decide to have three. And I could decide that the distance between the characters is uh, two. And if I press play, I now have uh, three little characters. I could have different prefabs for each one. Um, you know, uh, it would allow me, for example, to tweak the delay uh, so that the first one uh, jumps uh, after the. Well, the second one will jump after the first one, and so on. Um, I can also determine the number of points per second. Uh, so if I set it to 50, you can see that uh, every second I get 50 points. And uh, I can also change that to make it uh, 100 or maybe 0. And uh, if I set it to 0, you'll have to maybe collect stuff. That's actually the case in this uh, level by default. You have to collect stars to to increase your score. Um, I can change the, the text. As you can see, uh, it's my second take because uh, apparently I can record the video properly. Um, but you can change that text uh, by default. By default, uh, the instructions are here, and you can, of course, position them however you want. And if you go into your level manager, you can say uh, hello, day two. And if you press play, you'll see that uh, the text appears here, and it will automatically fade away after a while. 
Um, then moving on we have the level bounds. These are really important. They are important and you'll need to know how they work. So uh, you actually have two bounds, the recycle bounds and the death bounds. Both are 3D boxes, uh, wrong click, 3D boxes. So uh, that's the recycle bounds as you can see uh, here. And the death bounds are also 3D but uh, it's of course not obvious if I set the Z value to zero but uh, it's a 2D game so uh, it really doesn't matter. Um, the death bounce will automatically kill your character if it moves past them. So uh, to give you an example of that, I'm just gonna start the scene and uh, let uh, you know the penguins do their work. So that penguin uh, pushed me past the death bounce and instantly I was killed. That's what they're there for. Uh, it can be used to uh, trigger death when you're pushed or when you fall down. Uh, that's usually in most of the games, uh, including in your set, that's how you kill your characters. But of course you can kill them on contact with an object too. Um, then we have the recycle bounce. So uh, the, re the recycle bounce will be used uh, to recycle objects that have uh, an out of bounds recycle component. So for example here I selected one of the penguins and if I press play again uh, and move to the scene view. Let's have a look at this penguin here. Uh, you see it's uh, living his little life and when it gets past the bounds and uh, after a distance of 5, because that's how it's set up, uh, it gets recycled. The distance of 5 ensures that it's uh, really outside of the, the camera. Of course with bounds this big uh, it's really not a problem and I could have set them to 0. You can also decide to have a negative value if for some reason you, you, you want that. Uh, the, the reason why there's the possibility to set up that, set up that directly for each object is because um, as the, the center, it will consider the center of the object. So uh, if you have a really large object, sometimes you'll want it to be removed further away than smaller objects. And this gives you total control over that. Moving on, you can also change the duration of the intro and outro. So that's the the fade to black and from black that you have at the start and the end of the level. If I set it to five, you'll see what I mean. That's the fade I was talking about. So right now it takes five seconds, but uh, usually one second is uh, really enough. You can also uh, change the or add a start countdown. So by default, there's none. But if I set the start countdown to 3 and uh, say uh, hello people uh, and press play, you'll see that I get a countdown, my character is frozen and I have my hello people message and then I can play. Uh, if you leave it like that you won't get a countdown, of course you can have uh, a countdown of 5 and the text uh, of uh, you know whatever you want and uh, you can change that way you can change the, the number of seconds that you want um, here you can define the the control scheme so by default it's a single button I think but you can also have left right or swipe this will change uh, when you start the game it will decide what mobile controls to uh, to display uh, so either the main action button setup or the left right uh, and these include buttons uh, every time. So there's that and um, you can also uh, determine the effect uh, that get instantiated when uh, you lose a life so by default it will be uh, this one. Well, of course if I move to the game view you won't see but well it's a, an explosion and you can change that to uh, have whatever you want. This object will be instantiated uh, when the player dies. Moving on, we have the UI camera and its GUI manager. Uh, it's usually associated to the camera because uh, it will be responsible for displaying uh, the life count and stuff like that. So uh, associating it to the UI camera makes the bindings here much easier. Uh, it's also responsible for the post screen, uh, the countdown too, uh, stuff like that. If uh, you have a look at the UI camera, and uh, for example the countdown text you see that uh, it's it's only really a bunch of objects already set up and properly positioned 
and and bound so uh, via the UI manager it has methods to control all its content uh, you can of course uh, remove it entirely you can also remove the UI camera if you don't want it uh, you won't get an error for that uh, then if we expand that you'll see that we have an input manager in the scene uh, I won't go into too much details into this tutorial there's an input tutorial uh, dedicated to that uh, so I recommend you go and check it then there's the sound manager so there isn't one in this demo but uh, if we move to the sky theory one you'll see that here we have a sound manager uh, from the sound manager you can decide to have the music on or off same thing for the SFX and uh, change the volume of the music and the SFX separately uh, this will only have any an effect if you actually use uh, the sound manager methods so uh, I'm gonna open the, the class here uh, as you can see we have a play background music method a play sound used for SFX and that's pretty much it now uh, if you use these methods it will take into account these settings here the last manager is the loading scene manager so uh, to show you what it does I'm gonna move to the level selection and start it uh, I'm gonna double click on on this level here and see what happens so um, as you can see we've had a fade to black then a small loading screen and we've loaded our level in the infinite runner engine you can load your levels using uh, unity's regular uh, scene manager dot load scene method it's completely fine but uh, however if you want to use uh, the loading scene you can do so using uh, the loading scene manager load scene method it's really exactly uh, working exactly the same way as um, the regular uh, method so for example uh, if I if I double click uh, on my map button you see that when I press the map button I call uh, this method go to level and this method calls loading scene manager dot load scene and then the name of the scene that's really all there is to it uh, it's very easy to use uh, it's basically one line and one that doesn't really change from the classic API and if you want to change uh, things into the loading screen you'll have to go into common scenes loading screen and uh, here you have it uh, it's basically one UI uh, camera containing a loading text animation complete animation that is displayed when uh, of course uh, the loading is complete uh, a bunch of stuff that you can set up like that uh, have a look at the documentation there's more to it um, and that concludes everything you need to know about managers in the Infinite Runner Engine. I hope you learned something new today, and I'll see you next time.